please stand while the class of 2019 enters the theater. Please remain standing and sing along to the Zambian and United States national anthems. Praise 
You may be seated. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, members of our board, parents, teachers, alumni, students, and members of the AISL community. Welcome to the American International School of Lusaka's Tienda Pomozzi Performing Arts Center. My name is Ty Smines and I am the secondary principal. I am honored that you have joined us today for the celebration, this exciting rite of passage for the class of 2019. Many of you have traveled far to be part of this celebration. We are both honored and grateful. Before we go on, may I trouble you to take a moment to either turn off your cell phones or put them on silent mode. At this time, I'd like to welcome to the stage AISL School Director, Mr. Russ Menard. Good afternoon, parents, students, and special guests. I'm thrilled that you've come today to join the special celebration of our class of 2019. AISL has been at the forefront of education in Zambia since 1986. We have spent 33 years educating young people from Zambia and from around the world. Our goal has been to prepare them with the tools and the attitudes necessary for them to create a better world. An important part of our work has been to foster in our students an appreciation of our wonderful host country, Zambia. AISL and Zambia have long maintained a cherished relationship. It is for that reason that I am especially honored to introduce a very special surprise guest to open this ceremony. This person has long been a supporter of AISL. In fact, in 2012, he dedicated this Tiende Pomozzi Theater on this very stage. And he joined us again to celebrate the 50th anniversary of Zambia a few years ago. An inspirational leader and an icon, he is the father of this great nation. Please join me in welcoming back to AISL, His Excellency Dr. Kenneth D. Kaunda, First President of the Republic of Zambia.
Mr. Director, all dear friends, brothers and sisters, this is a great occasion for a number of us from many parts of this world. very happy that one of my beloved grandchildren is here with you and uh, I've been looking forward to hearing in the end his success at this important place of situation. continue with wonderful programs that you carry out here at this important center of education. It's a place well known in many parts of Africa because of what you do, because of what you perform, or how you succeed from time to time. It is a center of great importance to most of us and uh, it stands out because of the many successes you have succeeded to perform. Please continue, continue, and the good Lord God Almighty continue to guide you in this wonderful program. Good Lord, God Almighty, continue to bless and guide you all the way, all the time. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Your Excellency. We are truly privileged to have you here with us today. Today's graduation ceremony is a chance to honor 39 very special young people. As you well know, the students of the class of 2019 are a very eclectic bunch with diverse interests and talents. They are scholars, artists, athletes, servants to the community, and so much more. They represent at least 22 different countries. Some have been with us for a short while. Others have been leopards for their whole lives. Ali Karnim, Muhammad Adam, Madeline Barr, Ishan Desai, Muhammad Farhat, Noble Finlay, Hannah Kibram, Kyle Piri, Taya Piri, Muhammad Saadi, Zen Asadi, and Fabio Zadib have been with us for their entire school careers. Whether they have been here for, yes. Whether they've been here for a long time or just a little while, we're very lucky to get to know this group of unique young people. Now, as their personal journeys continue, they will spread around the world to pursue their dreams and make their mark on the universe. We wish them the very best of luck. Mm -hmm. 
At this time, I'd like to take a moment to recognize the distinguished faculty of the American International School of Lusaka. I am truly grateful for the dedication and care that teachers have shown these students and for the wonderful education that they have provided. Our teachers taught them, coached them, guided them, and inspired them through their efforts in the classroom and countless hours spent with them on evenings and weekends at sports events, after school activities, and a wide range of national and international trips. Their dedication and hard work has prepared these students very well for their next steps. On behalf of the entire community, I thank you. Would all of the primary, middle, and high school faculty members that are in the audience today please stand for a moment and be recognized. Today's graduation ceremony is a bittersweet celebration. Not only do we say goodbye to a wonderful group of young scholars, but we also say goodbye to several of our teachers. All of these teachers have worked hard to contribute to the growth and development of the school. These are all top-notch educators whose dedication and hard work has had a powerful impact on the school and the students on this stage. They leave AISL a better place for their efforts, and I wish to recognize them by name. Maria Albarnos for her two years of dedication as a student support services teacher. Olaya Ruiz for three years of service as an MYP and DP Spanish teacher. Martin Mikas for three and a half years of service as a student support services teacher. Rod Oliver for his four years of service as MYP Individuals and Societies and DP Geography teacher. Dr. Dana Schwarzkopf for her five years of service as secondary design teacher. <laughs> Kenneth Hoffman for his seven years of service as MYP Individuals and Societies teacher, DP World History teacher, and CAS coordinator. And Dr. Francesca Malazzi for her four years of dedication to AISL in a wide variety of roles, such as the Secondary Diploma Coordinator, Extended Essay Coordinator, CAS Coordinator, DP Language and Literature Teacher, EAL Specialist, and Differentiation Coach. We appreciate all of your talents, efforts, and devotion for our students. We wish you the best of luck. Each year, the PTA sponsors a writing contest, which provides an opportunity for students to submit their creative works in a variety of genres. The winner of the poetry category is named the Poet Laureate of the school. The honor of being the school's Poet Laureate for this year was granted to grade 12 student, Ms. Shaliza Murtaza. Please welcome our 2018-2019 Poet Laureate to the stage to recite her final poem at AISL. Good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to start off by congratulating all of my classmates. We've all come very far. This is the last poem that I'll be reading up here, and I'd like to take this opportunity to thank my friends, family, teachers, and everyone who has supported my poetry and encouraged me to keep writing. This poem is titled, An Unfamiliar Hallway, and is dedicated to my classmates. We have spent our whole lives in an open meadow running and dancing around with no clear destination in mind. But now, we feel, we feel as though we are entering an unfamiliar hallway, the hallway of life, where we have no choice but to follow a distinct path. As we walk along, we familiarize ourselves with thousands of doors. Each door has its unique features. Some have shiny golden doorknobs, others are silver. 
Some are made of thick wood, while others are made of heavy aluminum. We peek through the tiny keyholes to catch a glimpse of what, what each door holds, but we can't see enough, not enough to know whether unlocking a certain door will allow us to fulfill our dreams for the world, for ourselves. This is when our thoughts begin to mingle with the universe. And the universe tells us that doubt is a great cloud that will reign over us and make us question whether the world is ours to change or ours to save. But we must remember that doubt is only a cloud and we're the whole sky. Every door that we unlock will take us on a different journey to the destinations that we create. And the only thing that stands between us and our dreams is ourselves. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Murtaza. The class of 2019 has many creative individuals. Some of their artwork is on display in the Palm Pavilion, which you'll see later this afternoon. But at this time, I'd like to introduce a senior band called Lunch, who will perform Breaking Free from High School Musical. Yeah, we're 
Thank you. Lunch? I'd now like to kindly ask everyone to rise as our honored guest, His Excellency, departs. The President is going to sing his favorite song. Please be seated. Each year, a student is chosen by the graduating class to speak on its behalf. This student represents the ideals of the school through participation in a wide variety of activities, demonstrates citizenship and the IB learner attributes, and is in good standing with a wide range of peers. The student speaker's role is to reflect upon the memories and the history of the graduating class. The class of 2019 has chosen Ms. Madison McPherson as this year's class speaker. I'd like to thank my class for giving me the opportunity to just share about them. I feel like I've known these people for a very long time, even though I've only been here for two years. 
When I first came, I was a little scared of how small the school was because honestly, there's no ducking your head in the hallway when you don't want to see someone. <laughs> there's no hiding your emotions because there's just not enough people to hide behind. So, as a result, we all get to know each other very well and very quickly. Were, were you at the award ceremony yesterday? <laughs> If you were, you'd know how brilliant, tenacious, and supportive my peers are. I've watched these people transform from a group of confused teenagers into distinguished young men and women who I know are going to make it out there in the world. Although I may think this, maybe some of our parents would beg to differ. <laughs> We have all listened to their lectures about our actions now and how they influence the rest of our lives, about the domino effect and how one decision now will result in a reaction or consequence. I decided to really take this lesson to heart. So today, I'm going to talk to you about dominoes. Here's how they work. They are placed in a line spaced evenly apart. Then you nudge them and they slowly begin to fall. One by one, each domino nudges the next and the next until finally they fall. After they lay flat on the ground, you pick them up, one by one, until they are all standing tall again. Sometimes, high school makes you feel like a domino. You start as a freshman, set up in a structured learning environment. We stood tall and stable as we were untainted by the stresses of high school to come. We were eager to grow up and experience more of everything until we received the nudge. 10th grade. <laughs> Our teachers, coaches, and parents began to push us to be more responsible, to work harder in school. And so, like dominoes, we began to fall hard. <laughs> My classmates that experienced the roller coaster of 10th grade would probably describe it as a mess, and our teachers would have to agree. Things were said, mistakes were made, and it wasn't always pleasant, but falling never is. We entered 11th grade, hopeful that IB would go easy on us and we would grow from our previous mistakes. In a way, we were right, as we continuously worked through the challenges of our classes and matured along the way. But sometimes the falling stage lasts the longest. But then came, oh, <laughs> in a way we were read as we continuously worked through the challenges of our classes and matured along the way. Sometimes the falling stage lasts the longest. We would taste little bits of success and feel we were finally finding our footing again, whether that be achieving highly in our classes or making deeper friendships. But then came 12th grade. Mr. Eggy and Mr. Frederick had begun to talk about something called integral calculus. <laughs> and our math grades slowly dropped. <laughs> From sixes and sevens to fives, to fours, to threes, and sometimes twos. <laughs> IAs were piling up along with written tasks, FOAs, and more calculus. Some were dangerously close to failing out of IB math or having a mental breakdown, while others excelled and decided that working under pressure was the best way to work. But through all the stress, we learned how to pick each other up in our own ways and help each other stand tall like dominoes once again. When you think of our world today, what really comes to mind? Is it a world free of fear and anxiety? Is it a world of peace and ease? I don't think so. I see a world in jeopardy, a world that desperately needs change, but more importantly, I see a class that is ready to do the changing. This world does not need perfect people who have never fallen or struggled. The world needs us, the dominoes. The ones who are willing to be pushed, even if it means falling, over and over again. The ones who refuse to abide by the norms of society, no matter who or what we are told we should mold ourselves into. Some might call this stubbornness, but I call it drive. Drive is the word that comes to my mind when I look at the people I sit with today. This drive did not come easily. We have all known immense challenges in our high school years. We know what it means to wrap our arms around a friend who has just faced a near-death experience. We know what it feels like to ache for each other when a loved one has been lost. We have shouted in frustration at rejection and defeat on the field and in the classroom. And we know what it means to not always like one another, to face judgment and ridicule from people we thought were closest to us. But as much as all 39 of us may make fun of each other or find it difficult to get along, I see a group that is also willing to welcome each other with open arms and a joke, regardless of ethnicities, religious beliefs, or values in a world that often tells you this is not okay. 
But I think the world needs to learn from us. We have stared at each other in disbelief as the media headlines have read once again mass shooting. We have watched our oceans fill with plastic and the very animals we have grown used to seeing right here in Zambia face extinction. I've seen the guys in this class evolve into the kind of men that the next generation will desperately want to imitate. And because of the things we have witnessed, I know we will not sit idly by and watch our world go to waste. I think the challenges we have faced and the alarming things we have witnessed have allowed the class of 2019 to grow up together. We have grown into young men and women who have a much better idea of who they are and who they want to be because we never did things the way people thought we should. This has given us room to make mistakes and grow. I've watched my most shy classmates transform into AISL's most spirited cheerleaders and run to embrace me in sweaty hugs after championship wins. I've watched our guys read to the primary school kids in, in the kindest voices and boost children onto their shoulders on CSD days, becoming real role models for those same little kids. We have grown, slowly but surely, into a mix of fiery people, ready to blaze our own path in this world. Although we have often been told over the past four years to focus a little bit more or be slightly more responsible, I think our ability to challenge the norm and see a way to have fun in every situation is what will help us change a world that has forgotten how to do these things. So, to the class of 2019, keep laughing, keep letting loose, and keep having fun because there is no doubt in my mind that I'm looking at a class of CEOs, surgeons, environmental activists, professional athletes, Nobel Peace Prize winners. There is no doubt in my mind that whatever we dream, we will achieve it by simply being our unique, messy, and authentic selves. My final words to you are to live above the level of mediocrity because the world does not need mediocrity, it needs us. Thank you, Madison. At this time, I'm pleased to invite today's guest speaker to the stage. AISL has a tradition for the senior class to select as guest speaker a staff member who has a profound influence on their lives and learning. It is no surprise that they chose Ms. Julie Frederick. Ms. Frederick and her husband Kevin have been members of the AISL community since 2015. Julie has taught DP and MYP language and literature. She is known for her high expectations that she sets for her students in combination with staunch support to get them there. Ms. Frederick doles out the tough love. However, as you can see by being elected by these students as a faculty speaker, her kids appreciate her belief in them. It is an honor for me to welcome to the stage Ms. Julie Frederick. Madison's speech is a tough act to follow. <laughs> Good afternoon, distinguished guests, faculty, family and friends, and graduates. I had a dramatic idea for starting this speech. The sad thing is, I'm not an actress. So even though I practiced it a dozen times, it, it never worked. So I'm going to describe it to you instead. I want you to visualize this. I walk on stage and say nothing for 20 seconds. Everyone gets nervous. They think I've forgotten my lines. Then I cut my hand to my ear as if I'm hearing something. And I ask, do you hear that? incredulous that you can't hear it but of course you can't hear it because other than random rustling and muffled side conversations and the droning of the AC there's nothing to hear and then I point out that what I'm hearing is silence the point is to draw attention to the silence because breaking the silence is the big message of my speech today Please join me in symbolically breaking the silence and giving a round of applause 
to the graduating class of 2019. I could not have foreseen a time ever when students would select me to give such an important address. It is quite simply the most significant professional honor I have ever received. It's a big step up from the last honor tied with Miss Malazzi for best dressed teacher of 2016. <laughs> it's fitting that I'm speaking on, to, on for today's graduates. We went through high school together. My first year here was theirs as freshmen. I have to say it was not love at first sight. I think they'd agree. I wanted them to be mature. They wanted me to be Ms. Turner. <laughs> but we grew on each other, didn't we? The class of 2019 taught me a great deal about teaching, about listening, about keeping English class relevant. I even learned about rap music and splash emojis. <laughs> Thank you, class of 2019, for your honesty and daring to speak. It is a hallmark of maturity to have difficult conversations. I like to think we encourage daring to speak at school, that your teachers do their best to model what I think is an educator's moral responsibility. Question everything, even what is sacred. Questioning takes courage. It can lead to upsetting truths. What if your beliefs are built on sand or on the backs of the powerless? Speaking goes one step further. It requires daring. Every culture has its taboos and its accepted narrative. In her essay entitled A Short History of Silence, American critic Rebecca Solnit writes that a free person tells her own story and a valued person lives in a society where her story has a place. I think it's such an important concept that I'm going to repeat it. A free person tells her own story, and a valued person lives in a society where her story has a place. We are told from our earliest days to swallow our words. The saying goes, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. Full disclosure, I have used this phrase against my own children when it served me. Sometimes, with good intentions, authority figures ask those with less power to be quiet. Solnit makes a distinction between silence and quiet. She says, regard silence as what is imposed and quiet as what is sought. She points out that acoustically, quiet and silence are the same, but they are not the same, are they? We must be mindful of when we unintentionally impose silence. When we are silenced, we are erased. Violence or the threat of punishment is an effective silencer. But we are silenced every day in small, mundane ways, too. If you're considered out of line when you speak up in a meeting, if you're blindsided by criticism because you dare to question, if you are female or underage or disabled or brown or you have less money or power and you are told your voice doesn't matter, you are being silenced. Sometimes we play our prescribed roles so well that we silence ourselves. Mental health practitioners have a saying, you're only as sick as your secrets. In other words, break the silence, tell your story. These are wise words, but they should come with a warning. Remember this, graduates. When you find yourself speaking a truth no one wants to hear, 
when your story threatens the powerful, exposes the responsible, or burdens the meek, expect resistance. <coughs> Class of 2019, you are at the start of your adult lives. Do you know what people at the end of their adult lives regret? Their silences. I wish I would have told my mom how I felt. I wish I had spoken with my dad. I wish I had told the police. I wish I would have told the truth. Family pride imposes the most insidious kind of silence. The pressure is great. It's a miracle we hear some stories at all. Poet and civil rights activist Audre Lorde regretted her many silences. She fought misogyny and racism during the civil rights movement in the United States. She eventually realized and declared loudly Silence will not save us. When is a story appropriate? Who gets to decide? Silence is not golden, not when it is imposed, not when it tries to control or punish. Institutions legitimize silence every day with confidentiality agreements, for example. Sometimes we are told that silence is in our best interest or in our children's best interest. Is it? If you are asked to be silent, be vigilant. Ask questions. What am I agreeing to? Is the power balance equal? Am I, am I agreeing because I am fearful or is someone else's fear or is someone else's fear my silence protects? Who does silence benefit? If your questions are ignored, rebuffed, or villainized, you may be onto something. Class of 2019, you are entering adulthood in a turbulent time, as Madison said. Ultranationalism is on the rise. Attacks against free speech are commonplace. Legal decisions that remove a woman's right to self-determinism are turning back the clock. Global heating is approaching a tipping point. Nevertheless, be comforted by the fact that voices can make a difference. Massive public demonstrations have saved democracy in the past and changed the course of history for the better. Your voice has that power too. It is never too late to speak. Only this week, a former Chinese military officer defied a political taboo by speaking about her government's role in the Tiananmen Square massacre. She said the memories from that day tormented her for 30 years. China has largely erased the massacre from its history through systematic censorship. Ms. Jiang told the press, if you can deny that people were killed, any lie is possible. Ms. Jiang is now calling on everyone who took part in the protests to speak up. Black Lives Matter, Me Too, Fridays for Future, Break the Silence movements and LGBTQ rights organizations are comprised of individuals questioning the status quo, each breaking a silence and collectively imagining a new story. Class of 2019, when you leave the safety of high school, I implore you to fall back on the skills we strive to teach and model in and out of the classroom. Question everything, even what is sacred. Dare to have those difficult conversations. Break the silence. Please join me once again in symbolically breaking the silence with another round of applause for the graduating class of 2018. Thank you.
Thank you, Ms. Frederick. Now the time has come to introduce the diplomas. I'd like to invite the AISL director, Mr. Russ Menard, on stage, along with our chair of the board of directors, Mr. Frank Monticello, and IB diploma coordinator, Dr. Malazzi, for the awarding of the diplomas. Students, please rise. When your name is called, come forward and receive your diploma. Muhammad Adam. <laughs> Madeline Sarah Barr. Niels Sederin. <laughs> Ashley Tinatenda Chapoto. Ishan Desai. Priyanksha Duchania. Mohammed Farhad. <laughs> Noble Finlay. Tuane Grese. <laughs> Alyssa Shaheen Hamedin. Yunfei Huang. <laughs> Yunru Huang. Chimonia Kabunda <laughs> Sean Seth Camwendo <laughs> Ali Al Hadi Karnib. Anna Karen Kibram. <laughs> bon Ur Kikanda.
Hilda Landon. <laughs> Carolyn Lindsay. Mbiko Mayaka. Rourke Keith McDonald. Madison Nketchukwune McPherson. <laughs> Danelle Katarina Minar. Near more. <laughs> Enoch Mandia Jr. Shaliza Mataza. <laughs> Michael Matua. Christian New. <laughs> Linnea Sky Oliver. Jonathan Andrew Peck. Go, John! <laughs> Kyle David Peary. Taya Peary. <laughs> Emma Rubasova. Mohamed Saadi. <laughs> Zena Ahmed Saadi.
Kiara Smith. Freya Sunderland. Philippa Thurgood. And Fabio Zadim. Mr. Menard and members of the Board of Directors, I affirm that these 39 candidates have fulfilled the AISL requirements for graduation. Members of the class of 2019, as AISL's newest graduates, you may move your tassels from right to left, indicating your successful completion of high school. Dear parents, teachers, and esteemed guests, please join, in, join me in congratulating the AISL Class of 2019. <laughs> When I came for wood Now in the morning I sleep alone Sweep the streets I used to 